What is up, Morning Skate friends and family? We are back with another episode, and the boys are buzzing. Pun intended. Buzz Schneider on the pod released this week. We got Ked. We got Hal. Super Bowl Sunday. How are you guys doing? Viciously hungover. Uh, there was a lot of slander going on in the text group about me not being prepared for this uh, podcast, but I would like to note that I was the second one here at uh, about 9.58. So um, I'm feeling good, dude. I went up to Lake Placid yesterday, skated on that oval. That was a lot of fun. Just gonna re- ready to talk some hockey. I hope that you're doing great, BizDev. And um, Hal, how are you doing, bud? Okay. Come on, dude. You got to bring some more energy to that, bro. Yeah, better than an okay. What's going on, Hal? A <laughs> little background for our listeners here. Uh, I think there's something wrong with Hal. I don't know if he's sick or or if he's just really tired, but he, it, it's – Hal, what's going on? Not sure. Could have the bird flu. Been hanging out with Dale, so okay. don't know what's going on there. I'm okay. I'm ready to talk hockey. It's Sunday morning, and it's it like uh, it's just Sunday morning. That's how I feel right now. I uh, try to be positive for the podcast, right? But like deep down, there's like this fear in the back of your head. You know what's weird is I feel like uh, t- ten o'clock on a Sunday morning for like an adult would feel pretty good, right? Like, oh, I get to sleep in a little bit. Ten o'clock, I can still be productive, and like I totally get that. But the kid inside of me just really wants to go back to sleep. Oh yeah, for sure. I would. L- like if it was socially acceptable, I would still sleep till noon every. Oh Sunday, my god! You know? do, you remember, do you remember the days of sleeping until noon? I, I guys, I used to deliver pizzas, and there was one summer that I would literally sleep until about one thirty, two o'clock. Wake up, watch a couple episodes of what I like about you and Amanda Bynes, hop in my car, go deliver some pizzas, and then I would party from like nine to three in the morning. And I would did it every single day during the summer, and it was awesome. What a ride that was! Shout out Lacey Powers. Dude, I, I don't think we ever we, – we never talked about this on the pod, but all three of us delivered pizzas at different times at different restaurants. I'm going to be honest, Dale. I had no idea that you delivered pizzas. I knew that – I knew I that Howard and Andrew – I did way longer than you, bro. You Caputo. did not deliver pizzas longer than I did. I did for like nine months like Caputo's. No way. Yes, I did, dude. Like 2015. Wow. Was that back when you had like the Odell haircut? Like what time of life was, was that? It was like Van Damme days. Van Dam, when did you live on Van Dam? I didn't, but Connor and uh, Whitey did. We're getting too personal, but yeah, I would just okay. go there, you know. All right. Caputo's, Caputo's, Caputo's uh, is good. Yeah, Caputo's right. is really good. It's fire pizza. I was Primo's guy. It was eh, six out of ten, but the the owner there, Vince, had a lot of heart, so I like that guy. A six yeah. out of ten. That's so rude, dude. I, he, yeah, but he had a lot of heart, so I'd, yeah, I'd bring it up to like an eight out of ten. But like their product, I just wasn't a huge fan of. There you go. There you go. But yeah, Sunday morning. Uh, let's just, I, guys, we're gonna open it up uh, with a new segment. Um, there's this guy, and I, we've definitely talked about him in the past. Uh, his name's Greener. Uh, we met him when we were like teenagers. We go to like open skates, and he'd be on the bench, and he would just be hammering keystones, and, like yelling, just like screaming at people, or like taking a slap shot, and, like breaking the glass, and just like just your absolute like legend of of beer league. And uh, he's a huge Flyers fan, and I think he owns like pretty much every every Philadelphia Flyers jersey that you could own. Huge Mike Richards fan, so shout out to Greener. But I was talking to him, and I was like, "Hey, man, like we're doing this podcast. I'd love to get like each week. Give me like a minute of something that pisses you off." So he he sent some audio, and uh, I think it was pretty funny. I thought it was good. So this is the Greenway, uh, the Greenway Gauntlet is what I think we're calling it. So. All right. Well, I got to start off thinking. Garrison, the freaking Energizer Bunny Grant, and King of the PK, Jimmy Collins. My outlet passes made us like freaking plus 40. Never forget. I appreciate my one minute of fame, or most likely annoyance to most of the followers, probably. It is great to be here. I am the uh, investigating old man on the porch. Always, as Jimmy knows, cracking a keystone. And I got issues comparing generations. This argument, two-line pass rule. Give it back. Rule removed for more goals. Fail. 80s and 90s had more goals per game. Average than now. Speed up the game. Yeah. Go watch the 87 Flyers Oilers series. Or the 1987 Canada Cup. Get lost with that idea. Rule takes a lot away from the hockey IQ. 
As uh, Wayne Gretzky has been quoted many times, my favorite one is, the red line makes players think faster, move with more anticipation. My other friend, 94 Rangers Cup winning coach, won every championships, every level, including internationally, and fourth best winnings overall. Iron Mike Keenan. No red line, players can be fast and dumb. You screw up separating zones, you pay the price immediately. Like I said, those important legends of people also have the support of these legends, Gretzky, Orr, Hull, JR. Put the line back in. Simple decision to make in regards to the results of removing it. Although recently, I got to say this is the best quote from Dan Bilesma. Man, Pittsburgh Penguins, we don't want to like them at all, we know that. He says, the only way it would work is if the NHL was vigilant in cracking down on clutching and grabbing like it was 10 years ago. Get the hell out of town with that one, bud, on the ending. You mean when it was a man's game. That is probably going to be a topic for the future, and that is for sure. The Greenway Gauntlet, dude. He wants the red line back in. Uh... I, I fucking love this. If, if, in case you can tell, Greenway is definitely a part of like the uh, generation of like hard nose type hockey type shit. But what'd you have on Greenway's uh, Greenway's gauntlet there, Al? Also, we spelled Greenway wrong in the Greenway gauntlet banner, so we're gonna have to fix that. But how? What do you think? I don't know. I mean, I just feel like Greenway probably thinks that the Flyers would have a better chance if there was a red line. Maybe I think he's angling for something. Uh, he's disguising it as old time hockey, and like I understand what he's saying, but like we're not talking about like toughness or shit. We're just talking about like the two line pat. Like you know what I mean? Like it's just a red line, like extending the play, like those passes, like three on three overtime, like the set plays. Can you imagine if someone you sprung someone for a breakaway, three on three overtime, and they it called passed. the two line pass yeah. and it went back in your own zone, dude? Like. I don't know. I kind of like, like, I understand what he's saying, and I definitely appreciate that time and period of hockey. But, like, I, if there's one thing that I think is good for the NHL and it sucks to say, it's goals, right? And yeah. it definitely produces goals. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just really happy he's going to be doing this once a week. I feel like they're going to get better and better. <laughs> like, like first week he's leaning off of the, with the two-line pass, like put the red line back in. This is going to be fucking unbelievable. So, um, Greenway, thank you for that. I also have an update, kind of breaking news. I think we just got a blue check mark on Twitter. I don't know if you guys saw that in our email. Kind of a fucking flex. No is it, though, dude? I feel like everyone has a blue check mark these days, like – Every single reporter, every single newspaper, like every blogger, everyone has a blue check mark. Like, please don't downplay our blue check. Yeah. Mark. Oh my God, Hal. Like, bro, we're a couple of fucking idiots from upstate New York, and somehow we managed to fucking get a blue check mark. That's like kind of sick, man. I mean, is it? I again, I just feel like literally fucking anyone can get a blue check mark. If you, do really you personally, put your mind do, you, it. do you personally know anybody that has one? I don't think I do. I'm like trying to think, does Brett Merriman have one? I don't think he has one. I don't know, but I just don't think it's like a flex, dude. I feel like, I feel like getting a blue check mark in 2021 is like driving like a uh, Hummer in 2021. Like it was sick like a decade ago. I still think it's kind of fucking cool. Congrats, boys. Thanks. You guys want to sniff your own farts about it on the podcast? I just, awesome. believe, I just saw that email. It fucking just came across. You, you, so what happens? Just Twitter HQ is like... Yeah, they pretty much sent us like a congratulations fucking email. It's real weird. We see that you've done a great job based on your interaction performance. We have confirmed that it's appropriate for your account to be identified with a blue badge. Wow. <laughs> kind of cool. But I think, I think it's, hey, it's kind of cool, but I guess it's not that cool. So, <laughs> uh, let's just fucking go to NHL in the news. This is this is fucking this is eight plus. <laughs> Hey, really quick, uh, Real. before we get into NHL and the news, I said this on the last podcast, and Disco then acknowledged it, that he's probably going to be my mortal enemy this year. Just want to throw it out there. I kind of was giving you guys examples of reasons that Capitals fans get under my skin. Uh, Disco, the Capitals fan, told Hank, the Flyers fan, in the group chat that the Capitals uh, should hate Sidney Crosby more than the Flyers. The uh, Capitals should hate Sidney Crosby more than the Flyers? 
fuck? Did I just say that wrong? I don't know. I don't know what the yeah. So is. so Disco is saying that Capitals fans should hate Crosby and the Penguins more than Flyers fans should hate hate Crosby and the Penguins. He oh. thinks that that's a bigger rivalry than like the Flyers. Wow. Right? You know what I mean? I'm just saying, Capitals fans self important. Like everyone knows Pittsburgh, Philly. That's the rivalry. Like don't yeah. take that away from Philly too. Capitals fans. That's he just does, my point. He does have the Ovechkin Crosby thing, but like. When I think of rivals, like whenever the Caps play the Penguins, that's the only thing that's talked about. It's Ovechkin and Crosby. But when the Ca- when the Penguins play the Flyers, it's like, oh, here's a reel of five thousand fights that have happened throughout the course of history. Yeah, <laughs> and Gir- Giroux Crosby is definitely not Ovechkin Crosby, but it was always sick. Oh, like when Giroux was in cool. his prime, like that. What the shift when he like asked to start and he went out and like murdered him. Like that. Just was- saying. Just throwing that one out there. Starting off high. I love that. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't prepare the doc. Uh, so shout out to the boys for doing that. I told them it's like Christmas morning. I love that. But also, I don't know what's new and what's not. So the first thing is Tony D News Watch. Um, I know we talked about it last week. <laughs> He's definitely on his way out of New York. Uh, essentially what happened is after the game, him and Georgie have gotten to fight and Rangers management like told him like a bunch of times to like cut your shit and he didn't cut his shit. Now he's going to be out of town. Um, this wasn't brought up. There was a Rangers, uh, and I like to call him a fan blog because that's what John Davidson, the president of the New York Rangers, called it, a fan blog. Uh, fan blog. Uh, of a bunch of different people who think that they can run the New York Rangers better than the New York Rangers can run the New York Rangers. Uh, came out with like a report pretty much saying that this was like uh, that Tony D'Angelo stole Keandre Miller's puck and like didn't straight out come out and say it was like a racial thing, but like definitely implied it and then kind of backpedaled and used semantics to like, kind of be like, Oh, I didn't say this or that. They're still dark. They still haven't tweeted since then. But uh, for me personally, the one guy who did it, I I've never liked them. I, he, I don't think I could dislike a human being more than I dislike that guy. And like, I, I dislike him more than Mark Stahl for the people, for our listeners who have listened for a long time. That's how much, uh, but it was nice seeing him get canceled by Tony D after he was trying to cancel Tony D. I thought that was quite poetic. Uh, I don't know. What what did you have on, on this? Any of you guys have any thoughts on this? Like, this is something that really motivated me to get through the week. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I would say behind all that is that the part that sucks is that what the person was acting like they, they're acting like they're trying to protect Keandre Miller. Right. But it kind of feels like they threw him out there to the wolves, which kind of sucks. I don't know. I don't know. Had nothing to do with any of that, and now his name's in the news, and like he's being asked all these questions for no fucking reason, just because somebody hated Tony D'Angelo. It's absurd. And like John Davidson talked about it. Uh, Dale and I went into this one app called Clubhouse, and like we got to talk to Anson Carter about like uh, inclusion and like diversity in the sport and stuff like that. And uh, he even brought it up how like how ridiculous it was and how he talked to John Davidson. How he's talked to Keandre Miller and like it had nothing to do with him. And you're right. Like it brought it brought in his name when it absolutely just didn't need to be brought in. Also feels like, I don't think Tony, I don't think they're going to be able to move Tony D. I don't care what you say. Um, I think if the Rangers were able to move Tony D, then they wouldn't be fucking sitting in meetings promoting Chris Jury to assistant to the regional manager. Um, <laughs> they would be moving Tony D. So like, do they even give a fuck? Like what that, what was that promotion? I don't know what that promotion was. I think he was assistant and now he's associate. It's still, it's the same word. I, I don't thought understand. assistant was above associate. I don't know. Like Chris Drury was interviewing for the Pittsburgh Penguins job and then told the Penguins like, hey man, I'm all set. And I think maybe this kind of shows that like Chris Drury is going to be the next GM once Gorton's done or like, I, I don't know. I have no idea what that meant. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird to me too. Uh yeah, interesting. I don't have much more on Tony D. Do you? Do you think he's going to get moved? Do you yeah, think something's going to happen this week? Uh, I I don't know, man. I know that uh, Larry Brooks was talking about how the Flames are doing their due diligence or whatever. He's going to get moved. I just don't know what they're going to get from him. And I think the Rangers definitely want to move him because if they don't, I could see that being a giant headache as the season goes on. So, I don't know. Something to think about. Yeah. Uh, Tyler to well, The one thing, too, though, I would just say, like, I was looking at it. I know you don't want to, like, use a buyout or whatever. But if you really can't move him and you know it's going to become a situation like the whole because he's under that certain age buyout where, like, it's really not that bad of a cap hit. Like, yeah. you can just pull the trigger. Yeah. Like, you know, so. Um, we'll definitely figure it out. And, like, I mean, that kind of sucks for, I don't know. I don't know, though. When you get buy, when you get bought out, you still get paid. You know what I mean? Rick DiPietro is, like, collecting contracts to, like, still, I think. Yeah, but like, and again, I'm not, I've never been in the NHL, so I don't know how they think. But like, you no would think, like, you would think that he wants to play, right? 
Yeah, I would think so. I would think he would, but I just don't. I don't know if anyone's going to give anything up for him. I think he's going to have to like get signed after bouncing from waivers. Yeah, I'm, it's uh, I don't know. That's that's the Tony D saga. We're gonna we're gonna figure it out. Uh, Tyler Toffoli <laughs> has nine goals, thirteen points, and twelve games. I was talking to Jayla Tulip about his Canadians not that long ago, and he brought up Toffoli, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm not a huge Toffoli guy." And then I look, nine goals, twelve games. How is this happening? I don't know, dude. I thought I've always thought he was interesting too, because if when the Kings won, he won that first cup with the Kings. He was young, and he like produced. <laughs> He kind of went up and down, but he's one of those guys. I think he just it's kind of like pucks on that, uh, just a lot of shots, and that they're going in right now. And I, it's kind of like he's like the he kind of reminds me of like Pacioretty when he was with the Habs, right? Like their weird gold score. I think Pacioretty is definitely a better hockey player than Toffoli. I'm just saying, looking at like a right wing, I think Pacioretty's left, but just someone that's scoring at will. Do you think it'll continue, or do you think this is going to dip, dude? I don't know, like. I'm pretty. Didn't we say that we thought that the Canadian, like the Canadians, had a shot at being a good team this year just because they had like grit and they were fast? Did we not say that, or did I just make that up in my head? Yeah, I think so. And I also, I think we did, and I think we also said, or I said this when we were talking about jerseys. I love those jerseys, and I thought they looked sick the other night. Oh yeah, they look blue, the blue and red. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, I don't know. I didn't think they were going to do this well, and I, I don't know if this is a good time to like segue to talk about this. But when I look. At these divisions, don't all the divisions just look like super top heavy? Um, like, yeah. Like, do you think like the we as the we the people are overrating like the Canadian division and some of those Canadian teams just stink? Like, everyone's playing in their own bubble, so you can't like compare the teams head to head. And like, I don't, I just don't know what's going to happen when the playoffs come. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I think every division can point to every other division and say the same thing. It's like, what the fuck's going on over there? The North Division has the Leafs at nine two and one. The Canadians eight two and two. The Jets at seven three and one. And then the Oilers are six and seven. The Canucks are six and nine. The Flames are five five and one. And the Senators are two nine and one. Only twenty eight goals this year. Uh, they're one eight and one. Their last ten. <laughs> so that's not great. But I know the Canucks have been kind of on a, a spiral too. And then let's go, let's let's just break down each one. Uh, the West Division, the Avalanche are seven three and one. The Blues are seven four and one. The Golden Knights are six one and one. The Ducks are five five and three. The Wild are six five and zero. Oh. Coyotes five five one. Sharks four five one. Kings three five and two. Um, I mean, I, I guess that kind of makes sense. I guess it, it's going to be a battle for that final four spot between the Ducks, the Wild, Coyotes, Sharks, and Kings. The East Division. Bruins eight one. Bro, Jesus what? Christ, bro! Can I even get a word in? Or are you just oh, literally was, reading was, the standings? Is it like ESPN where we're just reading this? I feel like I'm. I feel I like it's Sunday morning. I was gonna break them all down then ask, but we could go division by division if that's. What I don't know. It just you were at, you were going so fast. I didn't know what was happening. I felt like I was just hmm. like flying through the box scores in the newspaper from the night before. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. But okay, West Division. What do you have on the West Division? <laughs> Thanks. I the one thing I was gonna say. So the Golden Knights, right, have looked really good this year. Six one and one. But they've only played eight games. Yeah. Like. I don't like I don't bet, but I feel like if you went to Vegas, teams that are gonna have all these games stacked at the end of the year, like yeah. gotta hurt their odds. Like at, the more COVID games you have rescheduled and the more back to back to back to back games that you have to play before the playoffs, I just feel like you're fucked. Yeah. Did they have a COVID thing happen to them? Like why they I don't know if they did specifically, if they're one of those teams where the teams that are supposed to play at COVID, like the Bruins are supposed the Bruins are about to miss two games because the Sabres are on lockdown. So I don't know if it's Raiders a similar situation. Up, right? Because of the Devils. Fucking, I, yeah. I know that there's a lot of drama between the Sabres and the Devils going on right now, by the way. The Sabres are like real bad at the Devils. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, we can get into that. Uh, the other, the only other thing that really jumps out to me would be the Ducks. I mean, it's super early, but I didn't think the Ducks would be sitting middle of that division. No, like when you predicted the year, I think most people would have said last place. Yeah, and, it, and you, you kind of nailed it too. It's still very early. And the Wild and the Coyotes are, like, right there with them. So, uh, I don't know. It's As the season goes on, it'll it'll I'm sure it'll open up a little bit more. Uh, can I move on to the East Division? I'm going to move on to the East Division now. Oh, God, I don't even want to look at the East Division. The Bruins are 8-1-2. and two. <laughs> The Flyers are 7-3-2. and two. The Caps are 6-2-3. and three. Penguins 5-5-1. Five, five, and one. The Devils are 4-3-2. and two. The Islanders are 4-4-2. Four, four, and two. The Rangers are 4-4-2. Four, four, and, two. So, and The Sabres are 4-4-2. Four, four, and two. So the Rangers are tied in last place with the Islanders and the Sabres. Fuck me. Um, 
fuck, that sucks. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, they're only a point out from that four spot. So that, I think that final, it's kind of like the West. Like you have your Bruins, your Flyers, your Caps, and then everybody left over. Uh, Bruins eight one and two. A lot of comeback wins coming from them. The Rangers finally won two in a row. It's insane. We're on a streak. What, what do you What do you got, Al? Not much. I mean, it was nice for as a Bruins fan. I'll get into it later. Uh, to basically like go four and zero against the Flyers and Capitals, or three zero and one, three zero and one. Excuse me. So that was nice. Uh, yeah, I the division kind of sits how I thought it would. The Islanders are probably the biggest surprise. Like, can they score goals? Uh, they had a big game against Pittsburgh last night, but it's kind of like. To me, the Penguins are the biggest wild card in this division, dude. I can't get a fucking read on them. We kind of talked about it last week. They're just a team that, like, kind of concerns me, but I don't think they should. But, like, what do you have on the Pens, dude? The one guy, um, the one thing I have on the Pens, Pierre Oliver Joseph scored his first goal last night. He looks sick. Yeah. And, and he likes going by P.O. I think P.O. is a sick nickname. Um, the – I. The Penguins, we just trashed on their D. They have him. Marino's young. Maybe their D's better than we thought. Fans love Dumo. Uh, I don't know. Do you, what do you have on the Pens? Like, do you think they're gonna get? They're gonna squeak in? Dude, the Penguins suck, dude. The, the Raiders. I know. Are, they the suck. They're one and one, but here's the thing: they have Tim Crosby. So, like, no matter what, they're in. They're in every game that they play just because they have number eighty-seven down the middle. Like he played the Rangers the other night and. He was by far like the best player on the ice. Every time he had the puck, it, it was insane. He tried doing the Michigan, but backhand. Like he was behind the net, took a second, put the fucking puck on his backhand, tried doing the Michigan. Like, what in what world can I even even remotely try to do something like that? It was insane. Um, but I don't think they're good, dude. Like Malkin's had a real shit beginning of the season. Brian Russ is one of the most annoying motherfuckers in the league. I wish he was on the Rangers, though. Uh, and then other than that, like they, I, I really like the way that Tanev guy plays. He just bangs bodies and blocks shots. Like he, he's definitely a wholesome dude that like, if he was on my team, he'd probably be one of my favorite players. But other than that, dude, and like their goaltending sucks. Like I just, I'm not convinced on the penguins. I, after actually looking at this and like seeing what the records are and stuff, I'm like pretty confident. The Rangers are going to make the playoffs. Oh, come on, bro. I am. I am. The Rangers, the Rangers have, they haven't, I don't know. People say they played well and they just haven't gotten their wins or whatever, but like, None of these teams, the Penguins, the Devils, the Islanders, and the Sabres, none of those teams scare me. What about the three teams at the top? I mean, that. yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say we're going to win the fucking Stanley Cup, dude, but, like, we also just beat the Capitals. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I think scare me at all. The only good team in this division is the Bruins. I guess, man. I mean, it would be kind of crazy to see. Can you imagine if Jack Hughes and the Devils go on the run and the Devils make the playoffs and the Rangers didn't? That would be... That would be something. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, another draft pick. My personal opinion of it, honestly, is none of those teams scare me, but I think all five of those teams are a lot closer than people think. Like, they're all right in the same wheelhouse. Oh, and yeah. it wouldn't really. Yeah. But it also, wouldn't surprise Mika, me. Mika Zibanej has, I think, one or two points this year. As of right now. When he starts yeah. going, the Rangers are going to start cooking. So. And I think Eichel can maybe, maybe this is the year Eichel like wills the Sabres and close to a final playoff spot. The Sabres are fucked, dude. They're four, four and two. And the only time the Sabres are good is at the beginning of the year when they come off to a hot start and they didn't even do it the year that they needed to do it. (laughs) I guess. I don't know. They're old. They're one year older. What do you got on the central? Anything? What are the, and Jeff Skinner's making $9 million a year to be a fourth liner. My dream. Uh, yeah, that's tough. That's such a hard contest, <laughs> dude. Uh, Central Division: the Lightning are seven one and one. The Panthers are six zero oh, and two. The Blue Jackets are five four and three. The Hurricanes are six and two. Blackhawks are four four four. Stars are five two and one. The Preds are five six and zero. Oh, and the Red Wings are two eight and two. Um, I don't. Can I just start out by saying this? Is anyone surprised that it's like the Florida teams that have all these reschedules, like? Come on, like I kind of figured that nothing, like whatever. Do what you guys got to do, but like, fuck, this seems like it's the rescheduled division. Hurricane Stars, like, no, like this division's kind of off to a slow start. Yeah, I think you're gonna see the Lightning, the Stars, and the Hurricanes for sure. Uh, the Hurricanes and Stars were further down on the list, but they've only played eight games. So, um, the Red Wings, uh, they've scored 22 goals this year, and they've lost eight in a row. So stay hot. Um, do you think do you think the Keith Yandel stuff kind of galvanized the Panthers? I have two things. Because yeah. we've been shitting on the Panthers um 
for a while on this podcast. But if you look, um, if you Check think about it, thing out, dude. You looking at yeah. this? This is yeah, from I when I was a kid, dude. I used to keep this on my fucking teddy bear. If it, for our podcast listeners, I have like these little mini, I guess goalie masks. So here's my Florida Panthers one. That logo is fucking sick. I do not know why they don't use that logo. And then I also just ordered this one on eBay. I got, I got my my Mike Richter fucking oh helmet. So I just added that. I, I wanted that to make a little little bit better over here. Also, hey Dale, are you safe over there, dude? Any opinions? Any thoughts? Wait, can I, can I continue? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 so sorry. my my overall point would be, I think Florida, right? They don't have the Bruins. They don't have the Leafs in the division this year. Like, do you think they're going to kind of cook up there? Like, they're only – it really does look like – if you look at those lineups that they're putting out there every night, and I know, again, it's early, Panthers are arguably probably the second or third most talented team, right, behind the Stars um, behind the stars and Lightning. I mean, the Hurricanes are good. I don't know. it. It'll be interesting. I just think maybe this is the year that Florida breaks free just because they don't have to deal with those two teams. Yeah, I'm going to daily face-off right now. Carter Ver – I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, Barkov, Duclair, Hu- Huberto, Wenberg, Hornquist, um, Vetrano, <laughs> don't know how to pronounce that, Tippett, uh, Hinnestroza, don't know how to pronounce that. They have a lot of names on here that I just don't know. And then Uyghur, Ekblad, <laughs> Nudavara, Strom- or, yeah, Strawman, Yandel. Wait, Yandel's playing with Gudis. That's insane. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not convinced. Maybe they kind of go on a thing, but. We will see. Uh, it's good. It kind of sucks too. It sucks that we don't get to watch the Red Wings uh, play the Senators this year. Those would have been some barn burners. Yeah, it sucks that the Rangers don't get to play the Red Wings eight times this year. That would be. <laughs> yeah. uh, th- that's kind of our standings. Then honestly, like we have a couple other like we had the Battle of Alberta last night. I didn't get to really watch it, but I guess Dale watched it. If you want to just talk about that for a little bit, Dale. Yeah, bro. Honestly, it was the it was my first Battle of Alberta I've heard all the hype, and it really lived up to it, man. That was a it was back and forth, back and forth, one goal after another. Um, the black jerseys are fucking sick. I wasn't a fan, okay. but those are fucking fresh. Like we had these black fair jerseys at Sienna that we only got to wear once, but like something about wearing all black, you just feel fucking good. Like look yeah. good, feel good, wheel good. Um, those are sick. I'll actually. Up a quick photo, um, but uh, yeah, it was a great game back and forth. Uh, Sam Bennett scored, he looked good. Uh, I know we talked about him last week. Um, Kachuk was just a fucking pest the whole game. Um, they, the announcers literally couldn't stop talking about him, like, so it's just in every single play. Um, but that's what I got on Alberta. You guys got anything on uh, the jerseys? The Flames win. The jerseys look sick. I, I don't know if this was the week of reverse retro, but the Rangers also wore the Statue of Liberties. We talked about the Canadians wearing their blue ones. Um, those jerseys are nasty. The flame, the Flames might have the best jerseys in the league now, at least I, in my opinion. Like their jerseys are sick. I love their home reds. Like those red jerseys are so fucking nice. I, I, I like. What do you think, Al? Like they're yeah. definitely outside of the original six. I think they have the best jerseys in the league. Luch scored last night. Luch plays better in black. Everybody knows that too, right? Kings, Bruins. It's just a better look. I agree. I think those jerseys are sick. Uh, they just – and I. it's the same thing with the Canadians and actually the Senators' just whole new setup. All those Canadian teams, their new jerseys just like pop on TV to me. It's the exact opposite of what we talked about with the Maple Leafs and that like gray. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I hate the Maple Leafs Rangers. They wore those last night, I think. Um, Put them away. Uh, yeah. yeah. It does. No, the pants bring them together, too. Like, the pants and the socks. Like, I, I feel like this isn't going to be the last time we uh, we talk about a new setup that I didn't originally think was, like, that great. But seeing it come all together is fucking awesome. No. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, dude. Um, we have a couple other things. I, the NHL is removing glass uh, behind the benches to add social dif- distancing efforts that b- help prevent COVID. How, like what? I, I don't understand that. Makes sense. Would, it makes sense. To you. So to me, it doesn't because you have the glass up that I feel like the glass would protect you from getting COVID from the other bench. Now that glass isn't there. And I feel like there's no, more- no, it's behind the bench. So the coach is standing on the bench. There's a glass behind. Yep, I got that. To, to stop the pucks from going into the stands for fans. There's no reason for it now because there's no fans. So it'll, it'll mitigate or 
Yeah. Maybe ventilation? Being trapped, it'll just... Yeah. We talking, we talking air circulation? Are we yeah, talking we talk HVAC right now? Yeah, vortex. Heating oh, and cooling? God. Yeah. It's like a tunnel, it's like a tornado. No, I mean, I get, I get what Dale's saying. I agree. I just think it's funny that it's just like, I agree that it probably will work, but one... Why did they just keep that glass in there in the first place? Like, you feel like the bowl gang, like the dudes, so the, the dudes who put the ranks together, right? And arguably one of the coolest jobs in all sports, in my opinion, the guys who switch from hockey to basketball. You're just a, you're just a union nail gun. Like, if you work that job, like, you're the man. Uh, you're like a NASCAR pit crew, but, like, way more. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But well, where was I going with that? I just got so passionate know. about those guys that I forgot. Yeah, dude, dude, yeah, we should have thought of it earlier, right? Is that what you're saying? Bro, this Oh, yeah, they should have thought about it earlier. And, too, like, all, there's all these COVID, t- like, cases right now. And, like, this is your response. I don't know. It just felt like it was trying to be, like, a response. Like, we're working on it. But it's like, yeah, just take it out. Don't Bro, make a... There was this story that was on the news the other day. And it was a uh, study show if you wear two masks... Uh, you have a less likelihood of getting COVID. And I was just sitting in front of my TV screen and I'm like, well, no fucking shit, dude. Like I could not believe that. It's like, it, these aren't condoms. It's not like you're fucking putting two on and breaking. Like obviously, yeah, actually a, a news channel six. I have a story for you too. If you hold your head in a snowbank, you're not going to get COVID either. So uh, it just, I couldn't, it was the dumbest shit I've ever seen. I could not believe that they made a graphic for it. I was like, yeah. what? Oh, no. Yeah, so that's like the same vein. I don't know. Like, shit. I feel like this happened in every sport. I feel like the NFL, like the first couple weeks, had some serious issues. Um, out baseball. Remember the Marlins almost shut down the whole fucking league? Yeah, and I think essentially, and it sucks to say, but what happens is pretty much everyone in the league gets COVID, yeah. and then it's <laughs> and then it's, yeah. I don't know. I thought I thought honestly the bigger story or the more interesting thing in the same article was that. There is a protocol which would have prohibited players and coaches from arising, arriving at the arenas more than one hour and 45 minutes before puck drop. So apparently yeah. they tried to do say you can't come to the rink for you, – you only have an hour and 45 minutes to do your warm-ups, and the players just fucking tore, tore it apart. So it's not happening. Uh, but, yeah, I would not like that. <laughs> I, heard that I heard that the other day. Players are definitely uh, creatures of habit. And if you try to fuck any – like, do not – if I ever made the NHL, like I'd probably go to the rink at like one o'clock for a second. Yeah, I was like, playing video games and just, just like, oh, right, right, dude. Like, just oh god, I'm just sitting naked on this leather couch for the next six hours, and I'll see you guys out there for warm ups. You I could literally, I could literally like pack a lip and like sit in the stands and tape a stick for like three hours. I would love it. And then they're like, no, you get an hour forty five minutes. This isn't club hockey, Gary Bettman. This is the fucking show. I make millions of dollars. Let me fucking enjoy my hot tub and my Xbox. Yeah, Ked, you used to show up at Sienna's. You we had yeah. practice at we had seven thirty practice, and you would get done with your classes at like three three thirty. And because we were both commuter students, you'd just fucking go to the room. Yeah, we just fucking Dang go hang in the locker room and just fucking vibe, dude. Yeah. It was a good time, you know. So I, I, that was a good point. Good point, Dale. Uh, why is watching Hickey so hard? Blackout hockey so hard? Blackouts the web of the league explained. I don't know who wrote this. Is this, this seems like a how? Oh, this no, is. A, dude. Nope. That yeah. looks like something that I wrote, like, blackout drunk at, like, 2 a.m., but I'm pretty sure Dale was watching the Battle of Alberta eating Domino's, and he fucking typed that out. Yeah, that's precisely what happened. <laughs> I was on Reddit to try to find stuff, and I found out that I'm not the only person that has this problem. So there's NHL.TV that's $25 a month, but you don't get all – you don't get the games that are on TV. Am I correct with this? And then there's NHL Network. I'm just looking at – I'm looking for an explanation on how me as a hockey fan who's starting to watch more hockey without cable, I guess there's sling TV packages. I don't know. It's just fucking confusing. The NFL does the same shit. They make it so goddamn hard to watch your team. I'm, I'm rattled about it too, dude. Uh, we're looking at an apartment after this podcast for Ked uh, and my dog. And that's one thing that I'm, I'm going to have to get Wi-Fi, and I'm going to have to make sure I have the capabilities of watching the Rangers. And I don't know if I want to get cable just because I feel like I literally just need MSG. Hey, hey oh, so, uh, so I don't know. Two things on this. I, th- I agree with what you guys are saying, but I really, I've really self-reflected because this has been my zero of the week before. Uh, and I think the answer is, 
you have to pay money. If you want to watch the NHL, you got to pay money, and there's definitely ways to fucking do it. You just got to pay money. Ked, I, I have – Fubo works for me. You get NHL Network, and you'll have all the MSGs. That's all I would need. What is it called? Fubo. How much is that? Uh, I don't know. They're doing like a three month trial. I don't know. Look it up. That's not podcasting, but like, do you know what I'm saying, Dale? Like, you just got to oh, shout yeah. out the money. Thanks, man. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. I know. That. I'm just trying to figure out what, where to do it, but this sounds promising. So, thank you. Yeah. I, I just learned that I, all I need to do is get f- fub- Fubo and um, <laughs> Wi Fi. I'll be good to go. So, yeah. Oh, boy. Um, I think that's kind of what we have for NHL of the news. We uh, Kale McCarr broke Ryan Hartman's ankles. Is very good. That is true. Um, Did you guys see that? I just wanted to. Unreal. I just wanted to point out. Um, unreal. Kale McCarr is so good at hockey. I like. I like. I hope he doesn't get injured, and I hope he grows into like what he can be. Because I honestly think like he is a very elite defenseman. Like the way he moves the puck, his skating. Like Nathan, dude, he's like Nathan McKinnon, but like a defenseman. Like the way he's he's he can just skate, dude. Like that's that's yeah. what separates uh who's the kid on Vancouver? The American kid on Vancouver. Uh, Quint, no. that's what that's what separates Hughes and McCarr from all these other like really good defensemen is these guys can just flat out wheel. Like yeah. They can just skate, and Bowen Byram's the same way. Like when he gets to the Avalanche, he's going to be sick. Adam Fox doesn't have as much as that. I think Adam Fox is more of a uh, – he just knows the game. Like I think his hockey IQ is off the charts compared to a lot of the people, but in terms of just like pure talent and skating ability, like insane the shit that those guys can do. Yeah. Last thing, yeah. uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins impressed me last night. He made a fucking filthy-ass pass. From- hey, so I love – I think Ryan Nugent Hopkins – I. I don't. I think we've talked about this before. I think he's like would be arguably one of the best number two centers on a different team in this league. Like, very, I, very underrated, super underrated. Yeah. Fans love him. I think this is his last year of his contract. Um, he's going to be like 27, 28. I don't. I don't know if the Oilers resigned him. I hope they didn't. And I'm just making this up. But uh, that's a player that, like, if if I'm a young team looking for a forward in the offseason and he hits the market, I throw some money at him. Yeah, no, I, I depending on how much. Like, I don't want to pay that guy eight million dollars a year, but like, if you can get Ryan Nugent Hopkins, eight million, like, probably like seven. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it depends, but that yeah. that's what we had for our. Wait, uh, Dale, you got the contract situation? It looked like I saw some Google in your eyes. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you did catch some Google in my eyes, dude. I was just looking up Hopkins. Uh, it was 2011 that he was the first round first pick. Bro, Dale's buzzing today. I think I think Dale putting together this doc has really made him be more a part of this pod. Yeah, so he's really, like he's, you're involved. Thanks, bro. You're engaged. I appreciate that. He's yeah, making he, six mil this year, and he is a free agent uh, at the end of the year. So something. He's, oh no way! That UFA. Maybe future Ranger Ryan Nugent Hopkins. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm gonna start uh, that now. Um, but that's our NHL news. Let's just kind of go to your Bruins talk. What do you have? I was hoping. Uh, can you go Rangers first? Jesus. Um. <laughs> It's like I don't know why you just did that. Uh, they beat the Capitals. Uh, Igor won get back-to-back games. They don't know who's starting next game. That blows my mind how you just don't ride the fucking hot goal, especially with tons of days off. That makes no sense to me. Uh, Lemieux at the end of the game, he did the classic: take the goalie's feet out immediately, put your hands up, and be like, "I didn't mean to do that. Why is everybody coming to try to fight me now?" So, like for sure, there's the next Rangers Capitals game is gonna be must watch because like Tom Wilson and Lemieux are 100 percent gonna fight. Yeah, the uh, end of that game was silly. So I saw funny. people tweeting about Lemieux, so I had to look it up. It was funny. I do want to so throw funny. it out there, though, I because I, I watched this game for about 10 minutes. Uh, you told me to turn it on. I had a small window. I turned it on. I didn't text it to you because I like Ryan Lindgren, but, dude, TJ Oshie blew him the fuck up. Oh, that yeah. was such a crazy hit to me. Like Sometimes you, I forget that TJ Oshie is a legitimate truck. That was a TJ Oshie is so much fun to watch, dude. Yeah, like, he's if awesome. I was ever in the NHL, I would want to model my game after him. Just because like, like, I want to be a superstar, but he can put the pucks in the net. And he, dude, he is so creative, the shit that he does, and he's physical. Like TJ Oshie is a fucking awesome hockey player. He, and he's 34, and he still plays like he's like 28. Yeah, I love TJ Oshie, man. I've, uh, I fucking I, I'm kind of upset that I didn't really get to watch him that much when he was on St. Louis. He's he's just he's so crafty, dude. Everything that he does is fucking really good. Uh, and yeah, Ryan Lindgren's like that. Uh, remember that one video of the guy? He's a soccer goalie, and they shoot the, the penalty kicks, and he just gets drilled in the face, and they like put him out there in a chair, and he gets drilled again. And then like there's a volleyball one too, where it's like that. That's Ryan Lindgren, dude. Every game he bleeds. <laughs> oh, also, 
I hope Fever Boy Rex is listening to this. I also wanted to let you guys know this, and I'm actually going to create a really quick banner while while I'm talking about this because it meant that much. Uh, Long Island, uh, stand up, dude. Anthony Bepetto's here. Um, he had an unbelievable goal against Capitals, and I just wanted to let you guys know that we are, in fact, potato believers. Uh, I saw that. I didn't know this either. It was funny, though, because before the intermission, uh, there's two guys, and I think the other guy, who's Blackwell? Is that the kid's name? Yeah, Blackwell, yeah. He was out, though. So yeah. You're, so you're probably thinking... Uh, who had a huge beard? A huge beard? It's probably Lindgren, dude. He has... Lindgren has... The uh, like mutton chop. What the fuck is that kid's name from Saratoga High School? Always had a chin strap, but like I don't know. Like he has like a thick ass chin strap. He just he he, Ryan Lindgren couldn't be more Ryan Lindgren if he tried. Yeah, that sounds like uh, I saw him, and then I think I saw Potato when they were walking out of the out of the locker room, and I was like, who the fuck is that? So dude, and then when he scored, he went down the line and he gave a. And then gave everybody the dabs, dude. That was so fucking funny, dude. Because you know for a fact, he did not mean to do that. Like, that yeah. was an accident angle after accident angle. And then, holy shit, I scored. But then he's like, but he was so pumped that he had the ability to, like, answer questions from the press and shit. And I, they said he hadn't scored in three years. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, I did see that because I was watching it. Yeah, they said it was, like, three years. And I think they said he had three disallowed. Did they say that? Yeah, yeah. The last three goals he scored, they were all disloyal. <laughs> Potato believers, man. I'm telling you, Potato's gonna get us in the playoffs this year. All right, I like to hear that. Um, the Shesterkin, I can barely say his name. It's him brutal. like him like fake going at Panarin. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Right. Pretty funny. Yeah, it was. It kind of sucks because like I feel like that just kind of proves that Tony was kind of a dick in the locker room. Like, I don't think you do that, like if that's your boy. But the, yeah, but it seems like maybe they're like galvanized a little yeah, bit. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. No, that was fucking. That was pretty funny. And then I just I don't know. Fucking Tom Wilson, man. What a player! I wish he was on the Rangers. He's and that's huge. And I think too, like I've been kind of shitting on you for like you saying the Rangers, like no one scares you. They're going to make the playoffs. I mean, that's a good. That's a good game. That's the Capitals, right? That's one of the the beasts. They didn't uh, have a thing that the Caps played like shit, but it's like who's the who's the center they have? The Russian center, who's nuts off? Yeah, I don't think he was playing. No, and but, who was the goal? There, uh, it was like that yeah. Czech Republic kid is not very good. I I kind of no. gave him. He had like one good game against the Bruins at the beginning of the year, but the more I watch him, he's pretty shaky. I hopefully Samsonov's like back. I'm just waiting for Zibanejad to start playing like Zibanejad, and if he does, the Rangers are gonna fucking roll. So. Do you think his hair is just a little too long now that like it weighs him down? I hope next year it's even longer. I'm, like, I don't want him to. I don't want him to like cut it off, but like maybe a quick trim. Bro, he's got, it's pretty he's long. To the though. point where like he comes back this year and like you already knew he had long hair and you kind of thought like maybe trim it up and then you see it gets even longer. I cannot wait to see what he's gonna have like hair down to his ass next year. <laughs> I, but at what point does that affect your play? I don't know. I don't know if it does. Uh, <laughs> Igor Shesterkin, by the way, wears like a, a a headband underneath his mask, like a fucking that. no, not like a headband, like a plastic, like the things that like girls wear. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the fucking thing that they put in their hair to keep their head, like their hair back. What is I that? I fucking called? love that, dude. I he love wears that one of those underneath his helmet. That's sick, dude. He's Russian. Like unbelievable. Like what? <laughs> and then he took a fucking he took a one timer from Ovechkin high. I think it got him in the side I of the saw head. That. How do you not flinch at the next shot or at any, if, if a veteran even looks at you, how are you not like just ducking and covering? Good point. I don't know. These are so fucking weird. I can't imagine getting hit in the face with a hockey puck, like a hundred miles an hour and then being like, okay, coach, I'm ready to go again. Yeah, he does. You're right. The more you talk about it, he does have big weirdo vibes, but like you just got to embrace it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you have on the bees, dude? <laughs> not much. I won't gloat too much. I mean, it was a huge week, right? Like three goal comeback. Uh, against the Capitals, I think we came back four times, like two two goal deficits, like uh, and then we had a one goal deficit. I don't know. There were so many of them. One of the comebacks was sparked. This was my big point of the week. Trent Frederick fighting Tom Wilson wasn't like the best fight, but Frederick threw. Um, twenty two years old, he had been kind of going after Tom Wilson for two games straight, and like, I just think it's a huge point to have a fourth liner or a third liner or a guy on your team that is like, yes, I will fight and I'll instigate a fight against arguably the toughest guy in the league. Yeah. Uh, it's fucking crazy to me because in that one clip of him and PK Subban, he sounds like 
like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> like, I cannot believe that a guy who talks with a voice like that is fighting Tom Wilson. He draws a lot of penalties. I feel like in a perfect world, him and Ryan Lindgren would be like best, best friends. friends. Yeah, because they both just kind of – he takes a lot of pain, but I guess for some reason he's really good at fighting. Cam Jansen loves him. He's from St. Louis. I wonder if like Cam Jansen taught him how to fight. Because uh-huh. when Frederick – do you remember? Like Frederick was like the – he was always like the two-way forward grinder at World Juniors, and he never yeah. – he went to Wisconsin. And now he just throws him with Tom Wilson. So I'm, I'm happy with that update. And he talks like this. Yeah, but that would piss. He draws a ton of penalties, dude. Ah, dude. Like, I, I, can you imagine like the first time he talked to Tom Wilson and like asked him to fight? Tom Wilson was like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Yeah, yeah, dude. No, hundred percent. Uh, so shout out Frederick. Uh, David Pochnock was back this week. I mean, ultimately that was probably the biggest story. Uh, for the Bruins, right? Four games, uh, five goals, three assists, eight points. Like, just kind of picked up where he left off. Had that one hat trick. He's just so good, man. Like I, this one stat that got thrown out there really kind of spoke to me. So it's most career regular season hat tricks, active players. Um, he sits sixth on that list right now with nine, and all the guys in front of him have more than doubled the games played. So Tavares has ten, Crosby eleven, Malkin has twelve, Pasternak has nine and three hundred thirty nine games, Stamkos has nine and eight hundred eleven games. Uh, it's just kind of crazy to think about that. Like scoring at an elite rate. The only person that's like on the same pace as him is Ovechkin has 27 hat tricks and 1,158 games. So he's way ahead. But like it's basically, and Eric Stahl has 14. So shout out Stahl. Wow. I, I, what a player, man. Like, and he's fun to watch. I don't know. I just, he has a smile on. Like he's fucking. Has he ever gotten in a fight? Ah, uh, yeah. I think it was against Girardi. Remember? Like way, way, Last way back. Fought Girardi? <laughs> yeah, I think so, dude. Or at least, no, he might have fought someone else after he hit. He No, he hit Girardi. I feel like Pasternak fought against the Rangers. Maybe he did. Probably well. a hell of a player, though. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. David Pasternak versus uh, Dan Girardi. I think Girardi actually hit, like, Bergeron. I'm going to have to look that up after this. I'm writing that down underneath Fubo. Last one, really quick. Tori Krug. I just want to throw it out there. Like, Tori, like... Uh, I feel like Tory Krug misses the Bruins. I don't really know what's going on. But he's like tweeting at Pasternak. Um, he's like liking people's tweets about him. And then um, the other thing too, I thought was funny. So last year the Bruins, like when they go come off the or they go out for warmups, they hit all the pucks down, but the, they would always leave one, and Krug would be the last one to hit it. And now this year every warmup, there's just one puck sitting on the bench. So it's like wow, like there's like, <laughs> this like love fest going on, which is kind of oh, crazy. Wow. Um, that's like daytime soap opera type. <laughs> shit. Yeah, dude. Like Jesus. When I put that together, I couldn't believe it. I don't know if it was a mistake, but they like, there's a lot of video proof. So, uh, yeah, I guess they miss each other, but it's like, fuck Krug. Like why he signed with the blues for a long time. Like he's not coming back. Like you got to move on. That's insane that they do that. <laughs> yeah, dude. He didn't die. He's from the blues. Dude, knock that fucking puck down. Like, I don't know. That's it kind of thank you for saying that because I it's like kind of touching because they're friends. And I love Tory Krug and I love Tory Krug as a Bruin, but it's like just slap the fucking puck down, bro. Right, dude. It's they're <laughs> acting like he died. He just signed for fucking million more money and, and went somewhere else. Yeah, and but it's not and I know he wanted to stay a Bruin. It sounds like, like they're having like a fucking tour five K run for him before like, before, <laughs> like we the we miss Tory Krug uh for rabies five K. Yeah, insane. Fuck, I don't know, That's man. Wild. What? A, of course, you know that. See, dude, like I wish the Rangers had little fucking like little tidbits of information. Bro, like what that. are you talking about? We were just talking about your goalie's fucking headband for. Yeah, years. but like, dude, that that was that was set. Like, I I saw that. Like, he took his thing off. I'm like, why is he wearing a hair clip? Yeah. Uh, um, that's fucking hilarious, though, dude. Uh, let's talk about Can I Brands really quick. Um, Dale, it's Dev time. Let's talk about it. What do you got? Yeah, bro. I've been enjoying mine. Um, again, can I brands? It's organic, organic, organic. It's uh, dude, it's good stuff. I've been liking mine. Look at the coloration right there. Oh, that's decent oh. color on that. This this oh, fucking cream's awesome. Like oh. no joke, this stuff actually like it makes me feel a little bit better. But again, like groin injuries, they go away, and then like 
you think it's a way, but it's really not a way, but it's making me feel like I can walk and not like squirm every time I take a step. So I appreciate that. Uh, Hal, have you been, have you been fucking with the can I brands a little bit? 10 squirt, 10 squirts in the mouth at night and I sleep well, dude. Uh, it says eight, it says optimal is eight. So I don't know if I'm not, I do 10 squirts. I don't know if that helps hurts me. Uh, is that called macro dosing? <laughs> yeah basically bro it's basically the same thing no it's good i like it i sleep well I, I like to toss and turn so uh good night sleep works for me yep promo code tms25 saves you 25 percent off your order uh yeah not 20 25 25 which is that's a quarter which pretty yeah. fucking dope. look at this check this out boom Use promo code TMS25 at canibrands.com. Well, it made sense if that was up there from the start. Yeah, I just saw that. I, I feel like our... Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm sorry. I am slacking a little bit. This it's, I think I think he fucking... Uh, you go. you complimented him. He sat down. <laughs> BizDev kind of blew his load at the beginning of it just to be super engaged with the doc, but like we're back reeling it in. Yeah, we're reeling it in. Ked, when we meet up this afternoon, you got to bring me some of the sleeve stuff too, because I don't have that product. But I want to try. Excuse you, dude. You get you get all the shipments of everything ever, and now you're telling me to bring you something. Yeah, go fucking. Just bring me one freaking capsule of the sleeve stuff, dude. I just want. It's not a capsule. It's a squirt thing. Yeah, Ked, if you want before Ked leaves, you can uh, you can open up your mouth. You can squirt a couple under your tongue, and then yeah, maybe I can do that. I can give you like a drive by. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, it was cool to see that uh, one of our writers, Henry uh, Hank, has been using this stuff since before we even uh, signed on with Can I Brand. So pretty cool. Um, that's what we got on the CBD train. Next up, Beer League. What do you guys got? Uh, you have a uh, video for this? Uh, I don't really. I don't think we first W of the year was that. Somebody I just threw that out there. My team was like one, oh, like zero oh and seven. We got a fucking win, boys. Oh so, yeah. So thank you, uh, thank you to the fans who've been supporting us, the families, the kids of the guys on our team. Uh, I'd like to thank you guys, my parents. It felt good to get a win. Felt like it might not happen this year, uh, but we're riding high. All teams make playoffs. It's something that a, a team can build off of. Um, <laughs> Dude, it sucks getting your ass. Like, it's uh, – it can be hard. Like, there's sometimes, like – I haven't been on too many teams. I love my team. But, like, like when you're losing, like, 10 nothing like, back-to-back weeks and the game's at 10.50 on a Sunday night, why is that guy up? I don't know. Uh, I accidentally clicked it. My bad. <laughs> uh, it's tough. So, it's good to get a W for morale. That is good, man. And a yep. young team like that in an early season is something that hopefully you guys can build and, and rally around. And uh Ked, I, I did want to ask you beerly ground up. I'll ask you too, Dale, but how's your how's the groin? How's the uh, groin? She's still sore, dude. I've been uh going to the gym this week, just but I let them know, hey, listen, I can't do any of this stuff. So they, <laughs> they make it's actually kind of fucking awesome, dude. Cause like I'm doing all like the hardcore like heavy lifting type workouts, but anything cardio based, it's a lot of moving. And I'm like, I can't do that. So they had me like do like these like stretch exercises. So like I hammer out the heavy like fucking lifting. And then while everybody else is getting fucking bagged, I'm just over there stretching. And, and it's fine. It's best of both worlds, to be completely honest with you. I feel great. So uh kind of like kind of like wearing like a red jersey in practice, I feel like for like football. Exactly what it is, dude. Exactly yeah. what it is. Well, so I'm watching all these people die. I'm just kind of like hanging out, I'm checking my phone, waiting for the next round. So uh Oh boy. Shout out to Metabolic. I appreciate that. And oh, just Dale. one more thing. Um, I have to, should we get an update from Dale? Does he have anything or no? I just wanted to talk about Miracle Golden Ale. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Beer, beer, beer leaguers. Thank you. Thank you for uh I'm thank you for including me, Hal, on this. Uh we're we're gonna have we're gonna, we're gonna make Jimmy wait, dude. That was kind of disrespectful, bro. What? Let me get my turn in beer league, dude. Bro, I was just saying that this was like the beer of beer league. All right. Miracle on ice, golden ale. Yeah, oh, go for it, Have you guys gotten your hands on that yet? Can I was supposed to, and then I completely forgot about it. Maybe we can pick some up today. Yeah, yeah, we should, we should meet up with Ryan. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that, Ken. Dude, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to be crass. Uh, Beer League, golden ale. Dude, the Buzz Schneider podcast came out this week. We got a lot of positive feedback from it. Um, Check these fuckers out, dude. Boom. Look at that thing. How bad do you want That's not even a beer league update, Dale. Can we move on? 
Dude, well, that's what I was getting it, and then he cut me off, dude. My beer league update is that I have no beer league update. It's frustrating. Are I you kidding me? I no, didn't we're back. Back. no, we're we're moving oh on, dude. That's God, bullshit. dude. Dominic Moore's. I thought you had I some. I not believe that that just happened. Hey, fans, this you, is Dominic Moore. I'm just gonna take you, you guys through a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff here. Wow. All right. Nice transition into heroes and zeros. What I was saying is that my zero of the week transitions nicely. I had well, it's Super Bowl Sunday. There's no game tonight, which sucks. I also do Tuesday night, Friday night. My girlfriend's away. She's like, "Oh, I'm so glad you know you took me out to dinner on Friday night and started playing hockey." So I got some brownie points, which is nice. But I haven't played hockey all week, and I'm going crazy. Here. So that is my update. And don't Dave's jump still young. Dale, are you making the buffalo chicken wing dip for Tom Brady tonight? I don't think so. I think I'm going to go with something now. I, I have some. I know. I know. I'm. I'm I want to make something awesome. Uh, excited. But, All right. No well, I appreciate, appreciate your zero. Uh, what's your hero? So my hero of the week goes out to our friend Amon, aka Dubsy, aka Biz Dev Dubs. Uh, I'm not Biz, like Biz Dev Dubs is going to be helping us out with new apparel. He's uh. He got probably what, twenty plus years in the uh, the reselling game, the the wholesale shoe market, eBay hype culture, New York City hype culture. He's, he's got he's, his PhD he's, in hype. He's got his PhD in hype, dude, and he's his uh, masters in fit. His yeah, he must have some new merch. Uh, it's gonna be merch that's like you'd want to wear no offense to not like you wouldn't want to wear our merch now it's just going to be like under armor and patagonia nike um come on dude i'm doing a good job with the sell but uh <laughs> yeah we're, we're gonna we're gonna get some good stuff fired up it's in the works and uh shout out to dub for hopping on the this guy train choo choo bitch i love that dude choo choo bitch dubs if you're listening to this you're doing a fucking great job dude i appreciate you uh yeah, I mean, honestly, like if you want to, I think our first one that we're kind of in the talks with right now is a Carhartt uh, beanie, but with our logo on it. So we're kind of uh, trying to figure all that shit out. I don't know if we're going to do like pre orders or anything like that, but it's going to be clean. And uh, I can't wait for people to check that out. But good here on Zero Dale. I'm going to be quick. My hero of the week goes to Jamie Alexiak. I don't know what the uh, what situation was asked or what question, but there's just a quote that comes from him and it said, Being a single guy, it's a tough time right now. Can I identify more, dude? Uh, the COVID really puts a damper on the Tinder, the hinge and the bumble. So, uh, shout out to Jamie Alexiak. And then my zero, it's the devil's getting COVID. Uh, the Rangers supposed to have a game yesterday. It was canceled because the devil's got COVID. And then the devils decide to spread their COVID all in Buffalo. Um, and we, I don't know Buffalo is super pissed off about it, but zero of the week goes to the devils and Jack Hughes additional 15 pounds of muscle and all the COVID that they took it in. So, um, that's my hero and zero. What do you got? Al? Hero of the week. Duncan, Duncan Keith. Uh, cool quote, by the way. Yeah, great quote. I wish I had the quote up. I probably should have been doing that while you were talking. But uh, basically, uh, he was asked about his 15 shots over the Blackhawks last two games, and his response was getting that Corsi up so you guys think I'm good. Uh, I love that. It's funny that, like, Duncan Keith's a weird one to me because I know his Corsi numbers do go, like, up and down, but I think he's also, like, kind of proven like a point like like if you're if you're a Blackhawks writer and you're like pushing the narrative that Keith's Corsi sucks like what's your problem yeah I think they have a lot more <laughs> issues than Keith's Corsi sucking <laughs> right so hero of the week was a fucking Keith for that fucking story you loser I hate people dude <laughs> I know uh as do I my I'll go two heroes though because I was trying keeping that positive shout out Duncan Keith my second hero uh, Jerome McGinley. I don't really have anything on this other than a couple months ago. Uh, I showed you guys that video. Jerome McGinley was like, like a random newscast, just like interviewed him about like a snowstorm. He's like, I'm from Canada and he was just living in Boston. Well, it turns out he's moving back to Kelowna, British Columbia, and he's going to coach U15 hockey. Um, I love that. Because that's not even like, I don't even think that's like a real, real job, but like, can you imagine being a 15 year old? You're like a freshman in high school and you find out Jerome McGinley's moving home to coach your u15 team insane can you imagine playing on that team no dude that's like that's the so sickest fucking shit. cool <laughs> yeah. that's so fucking cool that's so much cooler than anything i've ever done in my life <laughs> yeah. alona bc is sick too yes i know it's beautiful there you're just playing for jerome again while you're 14 
problem. Like, I don't know. Just thought that was an awesome story. Shout out Jerome McGinley. Like, definitely one of the ultimate good guys of hockey. So cool. Son of a bitch. Does, like, yo, know, does St. Louis still coach hockey in, like, Connecticut for his kids and stuff? I think so. But, like, and nothing against St. Louis. Like, that'd still be a pretty cool coach. But, like, it's not fucking Jerome McGinley. In a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. That's my heroes of the week. Dude, you got anything else? I have one more hero. I bought this Eddie Bauer coat that has fur on the hood. And I <laughs> yeah, fucking love that thing, dude. It's my pimp coat. It's my four brothers coat. I just wanted to give a little special shout out to Eddie Bauer. Thank so you, do you Lord. feel tougher on with a coat like that? Do you feel tougher when the hood's on or when the hood's off? Oh, dude. When the hood's on, I'm fucking fierce. Yeah. I feel like when the hood's on, you're fierce. But when the hood's off, you look more two brothers to me. You know what I mean? Like when you yeah. pop the top up, it looks a little fancy. But when the when the tops pop down... Uh, Bro, when you see Ked walking downtown Lake Placid with a fucking uh, uh, hooded coat that has fur on it. <laughs> Bro, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll let you know right now. If I'm walking downtown Lake Placid uh, and I see a guy coming up to me with a furred coat, I'm not fucking scared. I All bet right? you are. I bet you are. And also to Jamie <laughs> Lexniak, we talked about how it's tough being single right now. Get yourself a fucking fur coat with a hood on it. Right All up. right, shout out, shout out for coats. All right, but yeah, that's that's kind of what I got. And oh, we got a picture. Yeah, this is Kelowna, BC, dude. It's fucking beautiful. Oh my god, dude. Oh, do you wow. do you have any like winter pictures? Because like, yeah. I could you imagine like driving to the rink in the middle of a blizzard and like getting out and Jerome McGinley just outside like hacking a dart before practice starts? I definitely don't think he's hacking a dart, bro. Wow. He's probably like. <laughs> Maybe in in the in those summer pictures, absolutely not. But if you fucking put up a picture of like a blizzard in Kelowna and you're telling me that Jerome McGinley is not smoking a cigarette outside the rink, I call your bluff. I, I'm telling you, dude. I feel like I feel like you're not understanding. Jerome McGinley was coaching your team, not Aaron Asham, dude. Like it's yeah, like, no, but like that's like <laughs> Jerome again. Oh my god, dude. He's just again, just he's. It's it's sad. I've been on this earth for thirty years, and just Jerome McGinley moving back home to coach U fifteen is like cooler than anything I've ever done. Yeah. So, talk to you guys next week. Dun, 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 dun.